Ja, ik ben net aangekomen in Addis Ababa in Ethiopië. Ik ben hier de komende twee weken voor mijn tegenstage. De eerste week dan uh, ga ik naar Afar in het uh, noorden van Ethiopië voor het AGO project. En de tweede week zal ik vooral gaan kijken naar de distributiesystemen voor anticonceptiemiddelen hier in Ethiopië. Maar we gaan nu eerst even kijken naar het AGO project. So, uh, the project we are working with is called AGO project. It is uh, a project uh, aiming to improve sexual reproductive health and rights of young people in, in Afar region. And uh, we work in a consortium, in gender health is leading a consortium of uh, organizations including Amra Fields Africa, Trick Rise and uh, uh, Philips Hills Africa and we are providing technical assistance, capacity building uh, in, in improving service in this area. This project is important be, because we, we are uh, uh, like focusing on uh, young people because uh, we want to make like most significant change at, at the younger age. So we are partnering uh, with, with Philips because this area is a, a pastoralist dominant, dominated area and people's lifestyle is they move from season to season, they, they change places in search of you know, water and uh, grass for their cattle. So what with Philips, the importance of this Philips equipment is, is it helps uh, healthcare providers to move with the mobile population. It's, it's because it is in a backpack of uh, uh, certain basic uh, medical equipment. What Triggerize does in Afar is, you know, uh, we are supporting the referral linkage from the community to the health centers. Yeah. When the client, when the agent uh, finds a case, she enrolls her for after she is voluntary. She enrolls her for service. Okay. So using the mobile phone, then she makes her ready for service. At that stage, she gets five miles, okay. only five miles. Next to that, then the process between the client and the agent completes there. Okay. Then what comes next is sending her to the pro a provider. When, when, when the client comes to the provider, then shows the message on her phone to the provider. Then the provider counsels her and provides the service. After, after completing the service provision, the agent receives additional 25 tipo miles. The client receives additional 25 miles and the provider receives 10 tipo miles. Okay. What's innovative is the triggerized data is not uh, prone to manipulation. We have a plan like to increase awareness, which is a demand creation intervention. One of the interventions is comprehensive sexuality education for schools. We have like for elementary schools and uh, high schools. The one that we have seen in the morning is one of our elementary schools. We have uh, conducted like a theory of change analysis. What type of intervention should we integrate? Then we found that the first approach should be school-based comprehensive sexuality education. Yeah. The second one is community-based uh, sexuality education. We should support their families, their neighbors, their teams, religious leaders, and any of the gatekeepers, we call them, yeah. to support adolescents and young people to utilize SRH services, to avoid gender-based violence, to avoid gender-based imbalances in the community that we have. Yeah. Gender-based uh, gaps are really very high in this community. Uh, for example, there is a very huge disparity among women and men in terms of uh, uh, household course, at field level uh, issues, uh, business ownership, seeking services. And if a mother, a woman, especially adolescent and youth, have to decide to access health services, then the ownership, the decision is by the men. Therefore, this approach will help in creating a generation who can challenge, who can request his own rights to access mm -hmm. sexual and reproductive health services. And uh, a school is the primary entry point for us. They believe like working on the mothers is very critical because if they change the mothers, they can change you know the the, the family life. They can change the, the the kids' life. They can care better for the kids. They can care better for the entire family, and that's how they see significant change can could happen. Uh, 
Magnetum. Yes, it is very challenging because sometimes they attribute it to religious, to their religion, sometimes they attribute it to, to their tradition. So I tell them, like, uh, religion is not there to harm people. So, like, yes, they have to respect their religion, and religion doesn't, uh, doesn't like, um, prescribe anything that's harm to the woman. I also told them the good traditions they have, but also tell them that the, the bad traditions are also bad to them. So uh, after uh, she educates them, some of them are like trying, uh, began to understand and they're saying, yes, you are right and we have to take it. So some, some people have started adapting family planning, but still there is a lot to be done. That we educate the youth is because uh, we have to intervene early at their younger age so that they are aware of their uh, sexual and reproductive health and uh, rights and needs. Uh, for example, as you saw, as you have heard uh, of the story of that uh, abducted girl, she was a member of the group that they were educating on, on comprehensive sexuality education. That's why it's because she was aware that she demanded her rights and she was returned. So like, it's very important to teach them early so that they can be empowered to, to say no. It's also very important, you know, if you want to change, change is, change is, change happening at the youth is more significant than the others, especially to prevent harmful traditional practices, to prevent STIs, to prevent unwanted pregnancies. It's good to intervene at a younger age than intervening at late time. So that's why I believe it's important uh, to focus on the use. I am inmiddels back terug in Addis. My first week is there. One of the things that came up was that the difference between a place as here Addis and, uh, and Afar that it is very big. To give an example, vaccinaties ongeveer 95 nou 90% van de mensen is uh, gevaccineerd in uh, in alles hier. In Afrika ligt het percentage op 15%. Ja, wat ik verder heb geleerd is dat het echt heel erg moeilijk is om als je hier op op landenniveau of of uh, hè, op op het niveau van zo'n project in Afrika bezig bent om dingen uit elkaar te halen. Um, als je bijvoorbeeld uh, seksuele voorlichting wilt geven, dan moet je ook zorgen dat je voldoende doet aan ja, algemene opleidingen, aan, aan educatie. Je kunt ook geen uh, seksuele voorlichting geven zonder te praten over gender. He, want je moet ook praten over het feit dat uh, vrouwen zelf de keuze moeten maken om naar een health center toe te gaan en dat dat, dat niet de keuze van een man is. Nou, dit uh, was zo'n beetje wat ik uh, van mijn eerste week uh, heb geleerd hier uh, in Ethiopië. De tweede week zal ik in Addis blijven. Uh, nou, ik ben benieuwd wat dat gaat brengen. Ja, yeah, uh, of course in the previous years there are many parallel systems that are running separately from the procurement till the last mile distribution. And for each for each kind of product there were different separate systems. But uh, finally uh, after the establishment of IPSA and through process uh, we have tried to integrate these programs, meaning there is a single supply chain system. There is no separate system for family planning, there is no separate system for HIV commodities, there is no separate system for vaccines. And because of this, there is a significant save on investment for these products and uh, we are using all our resources efficiently in this regard. And also the quantification is also very important. We are undertaking the quantification process centrally by involving different stakeholders from the ministry, from the partners, from different NGOs. Uh, and we have established the technical working group that's going to do this. And uh, by taking into consideration the morbidity data, the consumption data, the demographic data, and different data we are uh, undertaking successful quantification in terms of program commodities but the main challenge that we are facing is especially related is that of the foreign currency the foreign currency access uh, uh, is very very much limited uh, but once we get a sufficient amount of foreign currency and uh, completing just the transformation activities in ipsa I think the future is very much bright when compared to the current one. Uh, UNFP Supplies is doing in Ethiopia. The one is uh, products, it's donating products. 
The other is it also provides financial and uh, technical assistance for the strengthening the uh, pharmaceutical uh, supply chain management system, it, uh, starting from quantification in terms of building capacity in procurement, in uh, warehouse management, and also in distribution. So it provides both technical and financial support. The demand is expanding from time to time. The, the health facilities, the country's demand is increasing from time to time. And uh, the 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 the, uh, the finance the finance issue. So we may not be able to uh, uh, supply as as per the demand as as the fund is uh, depleting from time to time. So in addition to that, we yeah to address this one, other country we have to have you know a domestic financing this mechanism, and there are different mechanisms like long-term uh, agreements and other uh, areas are not yet implemented in Ethiopia so there are a technical gap to to bring the system IPSA or even in the in general supply chain management to that level so still it, it, um, big support is uh, demanded for example in quantification for example we are having challenge in quantifying uh, products, especially what you call this essential medicines, for example, uh, there is no established system in procurement, as he has already mentioned, like in establishing supplier database in supplier pre qualification. Yeah, terwijl the zon hier aan het ondergaan is in uh, Addis Ababa, is it good to even terug te blikken op de afgelopen week, waarin we vooral gekeken hebben naar uh, anticonceptie middelen en de distributiesystemen daarvan. En eigenlijk ben ik er heel positief over. Bijna overal waar we kwamen, in health centers, in ziekenhuizen, daar waren alle belangrijke anticonceptiemiddelen wel aanwezig. Dus blijkbaar loopt dat distributiesysteem heel erg goed. Nou, daar zijn een aantal redenen voor. Op de eerste plaats hebben ze een aantal jaar geleden besloten, zoals de deputy director net in het interview ook zei, ze hebben besloten om één systeem te hanteren. Nou, daarnaast um, is er heel veel geïnvesteerd in automatisering. We hebben bijvoorbeeld een app gezien waarmee over heel Ethiopië, uh, zowel op centraal niveau als in de regio's, inzichtelijk gemaakt kon worden wat er nou op voorraad was. En dat is natuurlijk heel erg handig als je op zoek bent naar uh, bepaalde anticonceptiemiddelen. En een laatste punt, uh, wat, wat misschien ook wel heel erg belangrijk is, heeft toch een beetje met, met de cultuur hier in, uh, in Ethiopië te maken. Het is heel hiërarchisch. Dus als mensen zeggen dat iets gedaan moet worden, nou dan gebeurt het ook. Maar het is zeker niet allemaal rooskleurig wat hier gebeurt op het gebied van uh, family planning. Want er zijn zeker ook problemen. Uh, er is bijvoorbeeld heel weinig geld beschikbaar. Nou, en daardoor ontstaan af en toe ook, uh, ook stockouts. Um, dat proberen ze een beetje op te lossen door uh, community-based health insurance en social health insurance um, in het leven te roepen. Maar dat gaat heel erg traag. Um, nou, daarbij komt een probleem dat er heel weinig buitenlandse valuta in, uh, in Ethiopië beschikbaar zijn. Dus dat maakt het heel erg moeilijk om internationaal geneesmiddelen in te kopen. Daarnaast is er ook een probleem met human resources. Uh, mensen opleiden, of het algemeen zijn de capaciteiten laag. En op het moment dat je mensen hebt opgeleid, dat vertelde uh, de deputy director van uh, IPSA ook, ja, dan heb je ze opgeleid en dan verdwijnen ze meteen naar de, naar de private sector. Ja, en um, iets wat ik, uh, wat ik zelf de afgelopen tijd heb geleerd, met name ook uh, in de discussies die ik heb gehad met... Uh, oh, het licht valt uit... Uh, de discussies die ik heb gehad met, uh, met Marco Gerritsen, de themadeskundige hier, is dat uh, innovatie toch wel heel erg belangrijk is. Uh, een land als Ethiopië heeft 100 miljoen inwoners, misschien zelfs iets meer. En als je dan echt iets wilt doen, dan moet je op schaal gaan werken. Dus dan moet je zorgen dat je bijvoorbeeld, ja, net zoals in het project wat uh, uh, hier loopt met, met Triggerize, dat je um, via een mobiele telefoonplatform zorgt dat je heel veel mensen bereikt. Um, en ja, dat is wel heel hard nodig, want als je dat met een traditioneel project via een uh, lokale of internationale NGO doet, ja, dan bereik je daar te weinig mensen mee. Dus um, ja, ik ben er inmiddels wel van overtuigd geraakt dat uh, innovatie heel erg belangrijk is. Nou, ik denk dat ik het hier eventjes bij laat. De... De zon is inmiddels onder. Uh, dit was mijn laatste dag in, uh, in Ethiopië. Morgen vlieg ik weer terug. Uh, nou, tot ziens.